Hey guys, welcome to the Puddle Show. Dan here. Mick here and Ariel here. Then we dragged you out of a bag once. <laughs> so oh, wonderful. We're treating you with a little more dignity this time. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? This uh, this is entitled the Strato Mule. Feel yes, body. Look. Yeah. No. No. I kind of want to and don't want to hear this. <laughs> Here. What's this? Oh. oh, look at that. Hell. Let's say someone like John Mayer calls you up and says, Do you want to have a jam? Is this the sort of thing you'd take along? Hey guys, welcome to that puddle show. Dan here, <laughs> Mick here, and Ariel here. Woo! Hello, blimey O'Reilly. Far out, man. We just need a minute to get over that. <laughs> wow. Welcome. So great to see you again. Great to see you guys. Thank man. you for having me. It's been. Uh, when did we see? We saw Ariel once in the old studio. Yep. Almost uh, three years ago. Was that? I think to the day. No way. Because it was. Uh, I was moving countries at the time. And it was right around this time, like top of October, maybe end of September. Wow. No way. Time flies. And then we dragged you out of a bag once. <laughs> with, was that with Kirk Fletcher and Josh Smith, maybe? No, it was with Josh, yeah. <laughs> My bag moment. So, oh, wonderful. Uh, we're treating you with a little more dignity this time. <laughs> <laughs> Just a hair. <laughs> Just a hair. Uh, and it's a real pleasure to, to hear that. Blimey O'Reilly. Um, we've got a lot of things to talk about today. And you will also notice that um, there is a bizarrely non-guitar shaped instrument there yes like a collection of things that maybe you hit i think you hit yeah and uh, really loud. there so there's something that looks guitar. looks like a guitar amp that is bigger <laughs> and lower so <laughs> we're, we're gonna hope to have some uh, we're gonna hope to have some fun and see what happens uh ariel is our guinea pig <laughs> for that happy see what happens. put um, me out of a bag be a guinea pig whatever you guys need okay I, i'm gonna start dan is that all right please what is that? This uh, this is entitled the Strato Mule um, by my friend Matt at Mule Resophonic, and those that know him are familiar with his resonators and his Telecaster or te sorry Telecaster style Thank you. guitars. Thank style called Mule Casters, and uh, I've told this story before, so I'll just abbreviate it. Basically, when I was recording my record. Uh, I was channeling some Doyle vibes, you know, like that. What's that? My people. I feel like you got... That kind of thing. Um, I wanted to go for that vibe, and I was super inspired by it, and I had this Tesco Del Rey that I bought at a pawn shop on tour years ago for 50 bucks had a bunch of vibe to it, and I tuned it to this B standard tuning, which is just standard baritone tuning. Mm -hmm. 
And I play it on a song called Get You Back. And I loved it so much that it, it was just like, I want to do more with this. Mm. And I couldn't play that guitar live. It's super microphonic. Uh, the, sorry, the gold foil it, pickup in there is just like unusable live. Yeah. yeah. So I was talking with Matt and I said, would you ever consider doing a Strat style uh, mule caster? Because I'm, I'm truly a Strat guy and it took some convincing, but finally he said yes. And once I got it, it took some getting used to, but then I, I just started taking everything, not everything, but most things I play and applying it to this. And now I'm too deep in it to, uh, to get out of it. I'm just, I've become obsessed. Wow. It's fun. It's just different. And it's been inspiring a lot of ideas for writing and just playing. And it's it, fun. It's way cool. So Dan and I went, uh, went to the NAMM show in January and Ariel was there playing in the slide bar alongside Matt Schofield, Kurt Fletcher, Josh Smith, and Seth Rosen. Bloom, Bloom. I think, was the light up. And you were playing that guitar. Yeah. And it was kind of the... the the oral experience compared to everyone else in kind of standard tuning on normal wood guitars was arresting. Yeah. Wasn't yeah, it? it was yeah, like, oh, yeah. wow, Amazing. what is that? It sounds huh. so different. Because it is made of metal, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a steel metal. body. Look. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you know, like with um, James Trussart's guitars. Yes. We should give, we need to, we need to do some honking, Dan. Quick tune back up. Kirk, Matt, Josh, Seth. Who else have we mentioned? Uh, Doyle. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, I've got to honk you, Doyle. Yeah, I, I can honk Doyle as well. Oh, can you? Yeah, oh, I can. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hey, yeah, um, thank you. Are we, we, we going to re-honk on that? Have we mentioned anyone else? Uh, we have a serious honk coming later, though. Okay, good. And uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a double honk, actually. Uh, and um, Yeah, all right. You too. Who, who was I talking about? I was talking about James Trussart, who really deserves a honk. He of uh, steelcaster type guitars. Totally. And when you, my, I don't know about you, but when I looked at his guitars, I thought that that could never possibly sound good. Mm. How could it? It's it, made of metal. Same, and it's it's a thing. I've never tried a true start yeah. in my life, and it was never a thing in my head where I was said, "That's something I want to try." It's just something I always knew existed, and then just glazed over immediately. So the fact that Matt was doing these, it wasn't like that's probably not going to sound good, or it was just like, that's what you do? Let's just go with it. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm open to trying it. I'm just always open to trying different things. And it's warm and it's woody. and it, it, It's it, amazing. It defies yeah. what you And acoustically, do. like, I don't know how much it'll come across, but oh, it'll come across. It's acoustically, it's got so much volume to it. What's the scale length? Do you know? 25 and a half. So standard. Oh, no way. That's the biggest thing. Um, it's essentially a baritone guitar, uh, but... You know, baritones, what are they, 27 and a half usually, 28? I think they can be anything from 26 to, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 27 is the common, 27 is the common scale, I think. But the longer scale length, you get um, obviously more tension. And it sounds more like a, a bass to me always. Yeah. And less like a guitar. Right. And uh, normal scale length with the heavier strings and the lower tuning, it still sounds like guitar. Yeah. But you get all those lower frequencies and it doesn't step on a bass player's territory, like in a live context, sure. I find. I'm try trying to make it that way, but <laughs> <laughs> I think it doesn't, you know? It, well, it's a whole different uh, tomba, isn't it? it the, everything about the way it resonates and all the rest of it resonates is completely different. Totally. Can I just check one thing? So you said yeah. you're in, you're in uh, standard B tuning? Yeah. Which is the same intervals? Same or? exact intervals as standard tuning. Right, okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's B, E, A, D, F sharp, B. Okay. So two ways to think about it is it's a seven string guitar right. without mm. the high E. Oh, wow. Or for my bass player homies, it's just like a five string bass with a couple extra guitar strings. Or Okay, yeah. so you, so you so the major third interval is here. Yeah. Uh, I see. Exactly. Wow. So it's all the same notes like basically now my E chord Is that, but now what you get is like your, your D chord is it. And obviously the B. It, it, it's, you do all, it's, you're doing all the same things, but uh, they all have different purpose and different effect now. And as a singer now and songwriter uh, for writing and for vocal range, like open, sorry, 
B standard, you know, like the open D, open C stuff. Mm. As much as that's fun because it's low tuned and it sounds great, it's the, the biggest part is where it sits vocally for me. Right. And right. rather than having to capo up or play in positions that don't really work for me, I can play open down here and for my vocals, it, it sits in a spot that's it's super comfortable, place. yeah. Okay, wow. talking about vocals then, um, Ariel released a, uh, a record earlier this year called How Long? Uh, How Long? Ago? How long ago? Yeah, nine months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you don't have it, check it out on Spotify or iTunes or wherever you buy your stuff. It's a it's a really killer record, and presumably that guitar is it's not on it. <laughs> because, of course, it's not on it. No. Because it was I reused the other guitar that then inspired this right. guitar. Oh, wow. of course, yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did no, I didn't no. Of course, I didn't have it. I was thinking I had it when it came when it was released, but I mean for the next record, I'm already. I'll be I'll be starting that before the year's done, and already I've written so many songs just with this guitar alone. Um, it, it's just like such a big part of my sound now. Yeah. It will be all over it, and I, I put out a live uh, EP, EP back in yeah. April, and it's featured on that. Mm. And I'm depending when this comes out. I did a full concert in the studio that I recorded. How long in? There's been, you, uh, you so released there's... A, a clip on of, of that. Recently, there's, a, there's just a been, picture. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. With it me looks, and looks oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, so the story with it, uh, it's called Familiar Ground, and basically, I'm playing. We're playing the record down in a cover, uh, and it, I just invited some friends, some family, and called it Familiar Ground. A because the songs are familiar, because people have heard the songs already. They're but on it's, the ground. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you know, it's been a year roughly, so. I perform these songs and sing these songs a lot better now than I did when I recorded them. Right, you get wow. more comfortable, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, this, and it's back home in Winnipeg. And the studio, uh, Stereo Bus Recording, is where I did the record. But also, Stereo Bus Recording used to be called Channels in Winnipeg, and that's where my parents did all their records when I was a kid. So I've been hanging out hang at on, that studio. On. Your parents yeah. did all well, their records. Your parents did records. Let's yeah. unpack that for a second. Here's yeah. Something, here's something we don't know about. Oh, yeah. Sunny and Cher. Oh my. Yeah, those are my parents. <laughs> yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you probably heard of them. Yeah. From Winnipeg. <laughs> so your parents, yeah. Musicians, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have a band. Well, they had a band. Uh, they don't really play much anymore, but they cut a bunch of records in the 80s and 90s there, and my brother and I would spend our time there climbing the carpeted walls and watching Boy Meets World on a TV this big. What, uh, they, what, was, what was the band name? Finjan. Finger. Yeah, a folk See, band. My mom plays accordion and sings. My dad plays bass. Wow. Yeah. So you, you I mean, you were stuffed from a young age. You yeah. had no choice. There was no, I had had no choice. I had no, no choice. No. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't That's forced. Awesome. It wasn't forced like to be a musician. No, but of you grew up with music up all with the it. time. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's so it, important. It does feel slightly unavoidable if you're around it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, hundred percent. Because why would you want to do anything else at that point? Hundred percent. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, hence familiar ground. Sure. It's, it's that's the big picture description of why it was done there and why we're doing this. Like the way it's happened, totally was not planned. It just started naturally happening, mm. and it all happened around the time where I, we first did did our show when I moved. Um, it's just this natural progression that happened. It wasn't forced. It just happened on its own. And, you know, I have a long history of touring extensively already. I, yeah. I know a lot of people. I have connections. Uh, and I was able to build off of something, whether it was, you know, doing some videos on the internet, touring already, whatever. It all helped. Sure. Um, so I feel very fortunate in that regard that I was able to use that in a way to to build off of mm -hmm. but not be defined by any of that sure. mm -hmm. um no it's all good was it's it been... was it part of the plan so you start touring you do brothers landreth stuff and then that sort of propels you into this solo role was that the honestly what happened was uh brothers landreth was taking a bunch of time off and i moved to ireland for a while because my wife was studying there and i was going okay so I'm kind of starting from scratch again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did I start when I first started like playing music professionally? Well, I started booking my own gigs. I had a three-piece with the worst band name ever. Please. Groovy Mustache. Ah, oh, mm. yeah. Horrible. <laughs> uh, but what happened was, you know, it was just a bunch of obscure covers that I liked to play. I fronted it, wrote some songs, and people would come out and be like, hey, 
band's okay, but <laughs> hey, I like really like what you're doing. Do you want to come play on my album or do you want to come on tour with me? Oh. So I was like, okay, I guess that's how I should just start. And again, fortunately, I, I moved to a new place and some people knew who I was, mm. yeah. which was crazy. I did not expect that, but that's what happened. In Ireland, you mean? In Ireland. Yeah. Whereabouts in Ireland? Cork. Cork. And I just started booking gigs under my own name with the same mantra. I was like, some obscure covers that I like to play and and we did it and he was like I was like you know what this is this is kind of giving me the bug like I, I'm feeling some kind of satisfaction that I haven't felt in a long time where it feels right and it's just it's fun and I don't know it was good and I, I was speaking to my friend Murray Pulver who produced my record yeah and I was telling him about it and he said why don't we try writing want to do some writing and I was like okay and we wrote a song kind of liked it we wrote another song and then I I, I just Sooner than later, I just had this collection of songs and I started doing more of these gigs and then did a tour in the UK here with Josh. Mm. It's just like all these things just started naturally happening. I was like, yeah. I'm just, like on, on that tour, by the way, too, uh, <laughs> I was doing a clinic in London at ACM. We were playing the borderline, no, um, Under the Bridge yeah. that night. And I was doing a clinic in the afternoon, I spilt coffee all over my shirt that uh, the only shirt I had. So I do the clinic. I'm like, ah, great. I walk into a TK Maxx. Yeah. And I'm looking for a replacement shirt for the gig. And I'm just thinking about the last week and a half or two weeks of this tour. It had been going well and people were reacting to the songs. And I knew that I was going to be in Winnipeg the month, of, like literally a month from then to produce someone else's record. And I just called Murray and I said, man, I don't know if this is going to happen if, if this doesn't happen right now, but if I can make this happen and get all my ducks in a row let's just do this record i want you to produce it are you into that he said of course and i i just booked the studio time made it work somehow and a month from that tour we were in the studio recording how long yeah. see i and find that happens at tk max it, yeah it is the store of dreams yeah. it is the store of dreams and i found a shirt i found a good yeah, shirt too. No, yeah it is no i mean all kinds of things you want to buy in <laughs> i bought a trolley in there once for carrying a bass amp yeah it's, it's, TK Maxx for the win. It can happen for you. So yeah, if you're looking way. for the inspiration to uh, start your solo career, we, we recommend TK, TK Maxx, Max, right? <laughs> Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's cool. It's really nice thing. It's a great record. And as I said before, please listen to it. Thank you. Um, but bow with music. Who wants to talk about music? What we want to talk about is pedals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really interesting. So this is, uh, obviously, you're flying around. You need to grab something, you know, sort of grab and go. And stuff that covers all of your... Core tones. Yes. So how have you ended up here? Okay. Um, well, as you mentioned, I, ha I usually do a bigger board, mm -hmm. uh, which has been, you know, thank you for helping yeah. me put that together. And My pleasure. Learn from the best. Um, but, you know, it, they can be heavy. They can be a bit of a, a schlep to take around, they if you can. will. Yeah. And so this size is fantastic. Uh, as you were saying, I just want to cover all my grounds for sounds from my record mm -hmm. and just stuff that I would use normally. And to be honest, it's fairly simple. Um, I'm a always on drive kind of guy. Right. And I ride my volume 100% of the time. So like my full on and then my clean tone is, it's all dependent on the volume. Right. Uh, I'm not a like, step on, t turn off all the drives and I have my clean sound. Sure. I'm not that kind of guy. Um, so yeah. So the always on is the January? Lately it has been. Yeah. Um, the broadcast AP, which I am sure we'll get to. Talk about that in a second. Yeah, yeah. also is the always on sometimes. I, I keep switching between them. Right. Yeah, and yeah. one of them becomes a boost after because they both work really well into each other. Mm -hmm. But the order is I have the Octoland fuzz, mini fuzz, uh, then the January. Is this a GE or a SI? Uh, GE. It's a yeah. Germanium one. I, I have the silicon one too, and I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a super simple setup. We all know this Octavian type of sound, huge ass fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> Jan Ray, we'll get to the broadcast. Uh, Trem by Walrus. H have to hear the, uh, the, uh, the Octoland. Yeah, 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 me too. I've been I've, okay. I, I kind of want to and don't want to hear this. Okay, you want to hear it? Yes. <laughs> okay.
wow, that's uh, yeah. With is it, the, is, do you have it that dark all the time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I tend to EQ a little too dark sometimes. And I get the occasional sound. Like, can you uh, brighten it up? And I'm like, no, I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. Like uh, if you go, the glass setting is. I just like the, once you get a taste of fat, full, yeah, big, yeah, yeah. Same with the mini fuzz, I just can't go back after this. The slide, I really like. Really dynamic too. Like. But at the same time, just like the. Such a great sound. Okay, so it is such highly a recommended. Great sound. This is the older version. So the, yeah. the newer version, I think, as you probably know, is this configuration, top mount right. jack. I didn't know that. Friendlier yeah. for fitting on boards. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And this is Jesse Davey, right? This, this is Jesse Davey. Uh, King Tone. King Tone, yeah. yeah. Okay, we well, met Jesse, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you heard him play guitar? Yeah. <laughs> well, he was, so, you know, he's-, he's Of course, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, he's of course. English. Yeah, yeah, and his band, The Hoax, That's right, years of course. Ago. Yes. Ariel, would you please oh, give Jesse a- it's my honor. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's have a listen to this then. So let me see how you've got this set. Cranked. Yeah. Also on Fat Full. Yeah. Um, totally different from the silicon version. Uh, I actually kind of prefer the silicon version. I like the consistency mm. of it with just playing hot stages and stuff like that. Right. But this just sounds like. So there's a there's a bunch of songs from my record where I'm using that pedal. Actually, it's the silicon version, but that mixed with like a real heavy plate reverb, mm. hence the dark world. Actually, um, it just gives you this monstrous. Let me just skip. I through. love yeah, the yeah, plate yeah, in this. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's the same awesome. that I use. Yeah, it's um, magic, absolutely magic. And I just switched it out. Uh, I was using a delay, and I'm, I'm I'm having a love and hate relationship with long delays at the moment. Right. And I'm I currently don't have one. Nice. On this board. So rather than a long delay, I'm just. The plate thing is mind blowing. It's so, it it's just inspiring. And if it's a feel thing, mm. I just. It's love dystopian, it. isn't it? It's. It's broken and angry. Yeah. And... It's just mean. This thing is mean. Both of these are just mean. And I like mean sounding. <laughs> okay, talking about mean, um, we must mention our good friend Damien, who put this all together today. So Damien is, uh, I'm just going to prepare this little reveal here. Okay. So nice. See how this is going? I like this. Damien like uh, does Kurt Mangan strings, which we should mention because Dan and I use those, but also Reunion Blues gig bags, which Ariel uses and me and Dan use and everyone Correct. uses. So to say thank you to Damo for putting this all together and for delivering us Matt Schofield this afternoon. We should, oh yes. We should, we should give him a, th we should give him a, a shout for Reunion gig Blues gig bags, which is, you know, a total plant, but that's okay. Yeah. Because he's our friend. But show him some love. He's such a great guy. But look what's in here. What's this? Oh! Oh, look at that! Help. Da, na, na. <laughs> so, come on then. Okay. Sorry, just make sure that people see this because it's got your name oh. on it! <laughs> Pretty crazy. Pretty wild. That's amazing. Uh, please tell me that you heard about the broadcast here first. 
Uh, I mean, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Just making sure. That was all right. Making I've sure, heard of yeah. basically everything <laughs> that I like through there you guys. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I think I can speak on behalf of everybody. Well, we when we first heard the broadcast, and it, it was a it was a game changer. Oh, wasn't perfect it? perfect that you got that's it. That's the, the dual the dual knob version. The okay, dual, so, dual switch version. So, uh, I've always had a real nice relationship with the broadcast, and I know a lot of people. I've always heard. I don't. I, I don't get it, or you know, because it's not like a traditional overdrive yeah, pedal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally its own thing. Um, I've spent a lot of time with it, and when Michael and I started talking about doing something, this has been a year of back and forth and endless prototypes. Um, I just kind of honed in on the things I really like and the way I use it. And I said the things that I don't use about it, uh, the, the things that I don't use, mm. maybe let's get rid of those and simplify it. So. Mm. Um, the second switch on the original broadcast, the fuzz side, mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yeah, it's green when it's plugged in. It's great. <laughs> uh, but I never used it. Right. I never used the fuzz side. Uh, I'd always use it as an always-on pedal mm. or as a clean boost or I could get meaner with it. Right. And so I told him, those are the things I like about it. Why don't we simplify it? And he said, okay, what else would you want to do? And I said why don't we do a silicon version of the broadcast instead of germanium? And he said, no problem, we'll do that. So it's a silicon broadcast, uh, volume gain, and rather than the low cut, uh, this guy, mm -hmm. it's now in switch form. So this is more of a high, this is a high pass here. Yeah. Right. And then that's like a low cut. Like a low cut, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's trimmers on the, I'm not sure if the original one has trimmers as well. Another great thing about the, my version here, uh, you guys have probably tried the 24 volt yep. version. Mm -hmm. So you can you can run this at nine volts or 24 oh, or 18 nice. volts. Anything in between. Anything in between. Yep. And, uh, and obviously, as you guys know, I remember seeing <laughs> an episode on it, just like the difference of headroom you get yeah. Yeah, from yeah. running it hotter uh, to the more saturated style at nine volts. Yep. It's, it's, it really depends on the person and what you go for. I always play high headroom amps, like the sure. two rocks, um, where I don't necessarily need to be pushing it that hard, but maybe in a backline situation where, hey, we got a deluxe reverb and a Princeton for you. I'm like, ooh, right. maybe not ideal, yeah. great amps, but for what I do, yeah, I might can. think about running it that way, Higher. just so I can push something. Actually, I don't know if that would work, would it? Um, I guess on, it on smaller amps? Yeah, I think so, because it's, it stays bigger before it gets Stays bigger, yeah. So you, you, I think you still have a better chance once it gets to the amp of retaining yeah. some dynamic range. I mean, obviously, once the amp's going, then you, there's nowhere to go. But it has a different transformer as well for people who are interested. Yes. Actually, let's go full on no uh, Jan Ray. Yeah. Because this, yeah, it does three things right out the gate really well, in my opinion. This is kind of just as a clean boost right now. So, <laughs> what it does to the front of the note, I love that. It just sort of breaks it a tiny little bit, but keeps it really clean at the same time. Yeah. It's amazing. This setting right here is basically, if I had, let's say, the Jan Ray on and I'm full volume, it's pretty overdriven. Mm -hmm. If I go to five or six on my guitar, it's it's fairly clean, but with all that hair on it still, yeah, 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 that's yeah. this sound wide open, right? essentially. So yeah. I like to use that if I'm pushing it pushing the Jan Ray as sure. a boost, it works really well. But, you know, as an always on, if you were going for more of a light, medium overdrive, so clean. Oh, 
You know, it can do like. <laughs> not really my bag. Not really my bag as much, but it rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then most importantly, <laughs> you know, it really just. <laughs> That's, that's, you can tell it's like quite darker. And it's not too much gain. It's a lot, but it's not that crazy. But it's so, it's so dynamic. So you can hear, as soon as you change uh, pressure level with your pick, it just, that it rides that so beautifully. Mm. I, I love that. Okay, we need to do a, like a, Broadcast. Yeah, we do. Pick and mix pedal jams with this, that, and yeah. the standard. Like, let's do 124 volt. Listen to that one at nine volts. And... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So it's it's. I I I mean, I I feel like everyone that puts out a pedal says this. It's like the Swiss Army knife overdrive. <laughs> but I truly feel that way, and mm. I, I'm standing behind it. I'm super passionate about. So it has MIDI and presets as well, right? <laughs> yeah, a uh, version two will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is cool. I mean, what I like about it is that, um, you know, right from the off, different feature set, uh, different transistors, different transformer. So yeah. Yeah. it's it's not just the same thing in a different, in exactly. a different box. And that's very and cool. In terms of like nothing to do with the sound, but like how it, having it angled vertically rather than horizontally. Yeah, yeah. You want to make it efficient on pedal boards and make room for it. Top mount jacks. Mm. Uh, it's exact same enclosure. Yeah. Um, but it's just a subtle twist. Yeah, it's a subtle twist, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's twist again. You know? <laughs> so I'm happy about it. Uh, Michael's so great and just so open to, yeah, sure, let's try that. And I mean, he doesn't need any help. He knows exactly what he's doing and he's fantastic. I'm just super honored to be in it with him and I'm so glad we did it. It's really great. cool. I'm looking forward really, to- Really, really nice. Getting that plugged yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to be able to hear some of this other stuff in context in a moment because we're going to be jamming. Yes. Hopefully. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. But um, we've heard, I think we've heard everything except the, uh, the mood and the, and the mood. Yeah. Yes. Well, actually, we have heard the mood. It's been on the whole time. And I I'm, just I'm, love this. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably the worst example of... I should not I should not be demoing the mood at all. I'm sorry, Joel. Well, that's all three of it's, us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's such an amazing pedal. It is such an amazing pedal, and it's so crazy, but I just use it as a slap. <laughs> okay. Play. And it, it, all, it's on all the time, almost. I, I, I'm, I just love slap. It's, all, it's always there. So and it's that, a good right, one. <laughs> does, that, does that mean I'm not allowed to press this then? To press it. You need yeah, it. it. It's is, there if you it want. Is. You, you never Super. really know if you should touch another man's pedal board, but you know, I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's fun though. I'm it's... still confused, but yeah. So let's say someone like John Mayer calls you up and says, Do you want to have a jam? Is this the sort of thing you'd take along <laughs> to the jam? For sure. Sure. Or yeah. of course. If he, what about if he sent you a silver sky? <laughs> would you would, would that ever happen? Uh didn't no, but it, yeah. Yes, but no. <laughs> Sorry, we're yeah. all, we are referring to uh, um, Ariel's... Uh, <laughs> new best friend. New best, <laughs> we're uh, out. Uh, uh, He's in. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Let's, John give, let's, let's give John a honk. All right. Because we all love John. <laughs> and you guys are, you guys are, are buddies-ish? Is, is that... Uh, or Yeah. Yeah. Kind of pals. Guitar pals, if you will. So next to our picture of the Queen, we have a picture 
<laughs> John. I was there when this photo shoot was taken. It was a nice day. I feel very proud of the achievement. As you should. Yeah. What was that? I'm living vicariously what year was that? through your pride. Summer 2008. 2008, yeah. Just when that guitar came out. Which isn't there. <laughs> John, if you ever watch that pedal show, we'd love to come on Current Mood. <laughs> <laughs> Monument, then. We had these guys in recently. This, this week. This week. Really? Yeah. Who, which guys were in town? Colt and Jason. Oh! I love those guys. Yeah. Man, they're funny. Yeah, really funny. Yeah, it's great. So, the new version of the monument, same as the old version of the monument, just more Smaller. compact. Yeah, but it's great. Analog tremolo, but including the the ever so wonderful harmonic tremolo. Yes. And is that your favorite part of it? Yeah, that is. That's all I use. I have been a long time harmonic tremor. You have the tremolo. reverberato, is that right? I have the re reverberato, like the big one. Yeah. Um, actually, recently, uh, shout out to my friend uh, Tim from Milkman Amps. Oh, oh Tim. yeah, Tim. Yeah. You know Tim. <laughs> so I was telling him about how much that 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 reverberato is a big, big part of my sound, but it's too big. And you know, with the two rocks, you don't need to use the reverb on that because mm. the reverb on these are so good. Amazing. Um, I said I'd love to. I actually talked to. I think it's his name's Mark at Victoria, and I said, mm. I know you do the reverberamo which is smaller, could you do something even tinier somehow and just have it trim? And he was like, I don't think I can make it happen. So I talked to Tim about it because he does a really nice harmonic trim. Yeah, yeah. And he built me uh, basically a unit. It's this wide. Um, it's this, It's just harmonic trim. Two, oh, cool. Two harmonic trim. It's like the reverberato. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just trim. And it's, and it's fantastic. So I've been kind of trialing that out for a while now. They're both great. Mm. Uh, but when I can't fly with those, you know, yeah. it's fantastic. I love the monument. Um, I love those guys and they really are just honed in on good sounds and yeah. proper pedal life. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but How it's harmonic great. are you then? Let's find out. <laughs> Basically lives at that oh, tempo too. Yeah. I never, I never tap. I never change it. I just find where it needs to be, and it lives there. It's such a great sound. Yeah. Absolutely, it's so glorious. good. Yeah. And I'm, I'm actually not crazy about tremolo pedals that have volume on it mm. because I, it just kind of affects how it pushes air to mm. me. And I like, I love the flint. Flints are great. Mm. It pushes air the way that like the Victor the reverberato does or like an amp like an old concert my old concert pushes the air you just it's a feel thing mm -hmm. so much more than how it sounds uh, there's a lot of other harmonic tremolo pedals out there that I've tried um, they're all nice but they have the sound but they don't have the the push or the air it, that, in my opinion mm -hmm. that's how it's it's been a journey for me <laughs> but the the monument is has been a mainstay it's definitely uh, yeah, has that dialed in? Yeah, it's lovely, great. lovely. That's the that's probably my most important pedal. Right, it's five twenty two a.m. Central Time right now is what it's telling us. <laughs> uh, yeah, the clock is if you're playing a festival, if you're playing a club, or maybe you're a support date, or you have a curfew at the venue. You always want to be on time. Yeah, you don't want to be that band that plays over, gets carried away. So like you know when I'm headlining. I'll do a 75 or 90 minute set. Two or three songs in the show can have a two minute solo or it could be a five minute solo. Sure. Right. And depending on how the set is, time, like how, how the timing's going, that I gauge it all by the clock. And I don't like looking at a clock. No one really likes being distracted by that. No, no, no. But it's very helpful to have because you want to make stage managers happy. You want to make yeah, promoters yeah. happy. You just don't want to be that bent, so. <laughs> I was, sorry, I'll keep this brief, I promise. I was in Greece just recently and they put on a little festival in my uh, mother-in-law's hometown. Mm. And there's a couple bands on and one of the bands that was on gets to the end of their set and it's clearly the end of their time slot and there's 
you know, the guy's walking on stage and the stage manager's throwing his hands <laughs> up in the air and they have a full on argument on stage. Oh. That she wants to finish her set and she's got two songs left to do. I've flown all this way. You paid us all this money. I'm going to finish my set and everything's running late. And it's like the crowd are all like, dude, <laughs> dude, same exact thing. I mean, I've seen it a million times, but I went to, uh, my, the guy that does front of house for me when I can afford to break a load, uh, he does monitors at, at the Winnipeg Jazz Festival. And there was one artist, I was just hanging with him side stage and her set was, you know, he's kind of doing monitors. He's also by default stage manager as yeah, well. Yeah. And the artist said, okay, we got, uh, same thing. We got two songs or like th three songs left for you. And he's like, one song left. Like we literally have to get you off stage. And she's uh, can, can we do two more? He's like, <laughs> no, one song left. And he's telling the band and the band's kind of like, it's not our call. And she ended up doing like a 30 second version of one of those songs and then went into the last song, kind of like derail, not de didn't derail her set, but it's like, it's it was just unorganized and it was just kind of came off a little clumsy. And, yeah, yeah. and if you just like, you know your time limit and you kind of craft your set around yep. that. And if you just have the clock, you're just, it's always See, I, there you go. I have the exact opposite story where the drama that you're playing with in a bit, we would be doing this duo and this gig was the most horrific, awful for a number of different reasons. And we were watching the clock <laughs> and it's at halfway through a chorus of the last tune, it turns out, thank you, good night, bang, off, <laughs> gone. <laughs> so yes, so important for yeah. a number of different reasons. Cork. Could do roll up please or? Yeah. <laughs> Tag hewer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think at that pedal show, um, addition digital pedal board clock could work really well. If you make digital clocks, Ooh. please. No. They'd sell like hotcakes. Yeah, you know that. We're always looking for crap to sell. You know <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, you've got any tour dates coming up? I do have tour dates coming up. Yeah. Coming on the road to see you. Um, doing a big Canadian tour end of October, depending when this comes out. Mm -hmm. Starts on October 27th. Be back in the UK here at the top of 2020. Oh, oh cool. brilliant. Scandinavia, some other places. Uh, lots of it's not announced yet, but it is yeah. happening. And yeah. Where can people find your tour dates? Uh, arielposen.com. Nice. Or at arielposen on all the social media. On socials. Oh, so on my nice. socials. Lovely. Nice. Hit me on my socials. <laughs> yeah. And also, we should also say, there's a couple things coming out for people to learn from you. Yes. yes. That's right. Yeah, I did a, a little master slide course with my friends at Pickup Music, which is, uh, if you don't know what Pickup Music is, they're a basically born on Instagram. It's a music musician community, half a million people on it now. Uh, so they do a bunch of masterclass courses. That one's a specific slide course. Uh, I, and I did a True Fire course a couple weeks ago with those guys in Florida, which was super lovely. Uh, it's called Electric Storyteller. And it just focuses, oh, focuses nice. on telling a story in your improvising and your soloing, more, almost more philosophical than technical. So I'm really looking forward for that to come out. It's like I got out of bed on the wrong side of the oh, and then I fell off the pavement. Oh no, now I've broken my leg. That's, that's the story I tell. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it has been fantastic to see you again and hang out. So great to see you guys. Yeah, Such yeah, a pleasure. Brilliant. Thank um, you. Yes, yeah, so guys, go and check out uh, all Ariel stuff and make sure to check out the album. It is brilliant. Okay, yeah. massive thank you to our patrons and Patreons for making this possible. Thank you guys so much. Also to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey, where you can sometimes see Mr. Ariel Posen. Oh, yes. Once in a blue moon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. blue moon. Oh, and also in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. And also a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed T-shirts and mugs and backing tracks and it's all there. Journals, strings. Journals, strings. Strings. Yeah, strings. Our, our own, see, we, we we have signature gear too. Damn we, right we, you do. We have some Kurt Megan strings. Uh, and we also have our initials on the pedal as well. So you, you're now part of a very unique special club. <laughs> Except he can play. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Brilliant, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye.
Mm-hmm.